There we go. All right. To my fellow yo, uh, women and men in the gospel, those who share the responsibility along with me on uh, being called to tell uh, not others, but all of us how to live. We get in the habit of preaching to other folk, and we, we live worse than they do. Lord have mercy. That is another sermon all together. Amen. Uh, when you've been called to do more, you've been called to live better uh, and be a better example. And uh, you just have to wade your way through it, practicing what we preach. Uh, to the officers of the church, to the deacons and uh, the elders and the ministers, uh, and uh, to all the leaders of God's people, uh, and to this waiting congregation, whoever you are and wherever you are out there, we just thank God for you uh, today. Amen. Uh, and certainly to the Greater Friendship family, I always say this uh, because uh, God didn't have to bless us to be able to do what we're doing in preaching and teaching the Word of God. So we're very thankful for that, thankful to God for that. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, before we do that, go ahead and turn to Luke, uh, the uh, 15th, uh, the 8th chapter, 15th verse, and it's not the same uh, message as you can see. Uh, but I had another one in mind, but God said, no, we're not through in this section yet. Uh, but while you find the eighth, finding the 8th chapter of Luke, just want to remind uh, the uh, pastor, uh, elders, deacons, and ministers of our uh, prayer meeting on Sunday morning at 930. I wasn't able to get on this morning and for whatever reason. Uh, but uh, it's at 930, and I'm sure they had a wonderful time. We always do. And then we have 11 o'clock. Uh, worship service, which is where we are now. And at 12 o'clock, we'll have James time. If anyone wants James time, and uh, let that be known. we That's a one-on-one -on -one prayer. When you need extra anything, extra everything, uh, that's what that is for. Uh, so if you need an extra boost to get over, you kind of hung where you are, you need God to move for you, James time is a good time. Also at 12.30, from uh, 12.30 until 1.30, Elder Williams will, will be teaching uh, Sunday school, which is a, a wonderful, uh, praise God, uh, opportunity to really be taught and to interact with the teacher. You can't interact with me by asking questions uh, like that, uh, but you can certainly interact uh, in Sunday school. So in a, in a great, great, always a great lesson, always a great word there. Wednesday night, uh, Tuesday night uh, is uh, Principles of Godly Living from 7 until 8 o'clock. Uh, every first and third Tuesday taught by Elder Bennett. Uh, and uh, on uh, Wednesday night, of course, uh, we're back in, in uh, Bible study. Uh, we don't, we're don't we not seeing everybody on Bible study. I don't know if the word's gotten out, but we want to see you on Bible study. We are back in Bible study at, again and uh, from 7 until 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. Uh, and then uh, finally on Thursday night, Loving Unconditionally. Uh, Bible class from 7 until 8 every second and fourth Thursday, and that is taught by, again, by Elder Williams. God bless you, and we love you. Uh, I know that you've already made it to the 8th chapter of Luke. Uh, we've been there. We talked about, amen, uh, 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 oh, where art thou? Amen. Five sermons in that series, and, and God wants us to, to, to put the icing on the cake here. So, uh, let us look at Luke 8, 15, uh, 16, uh, 17, and I believe 18. I've got them spread out here. Uh, but it reads, it reads thus. Uh, but that on good ground, remember, that on good ground, uh, that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Amen. Verse 16 says, uh, no man, no man, when he has lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. Verse 17, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Amen. Last verse. Take heed therefore how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth. 
Amen. I love that part right there. He seemeth to have. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we just come now asking for forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we come uh, asking you to forgive us as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, our evil to you is greater than their evil to us. And Lord, if you can forgive us, surely we can forgive them. Lord, help us to learn how to forgive and forgive us all and wash us all in the blood of Jesus Christ. Everyone that's listening, every uh, uh, one that's listening and their entire family, Lord, you bless them uh, to hear your word and to, and to keep your word and to do your word and to be blessed by your word. Oh, Father God, before we leave here, let us all and our family members find you before we leave this place. Let us find good ground. Let us give you good ground in our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, allow your word through the power of your Holy Spirit to uh, cause us to turn from our way to your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, oh great God Almighty. Amen. Amen. want to talk to you today. We read those scriptures. And uh, one of the things that, 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 that we want to start out talking about uh, is, is that uh, we, we, we talked about the, the wayside, uh, and that's one way to go to hell when you ignore the word of God. We talked about uh, 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 the way, the, the, when the word of God fell the seed or the word of God fell among rocks, and, and, that, and we ran upon some things that we didn't want to get rid of and we didn't want God to deal with in our life. And so we left the rocks there. We left the sin there. We didn't ask God to help us with it. Uh, that's another way to go to hell, to ignore your sin and not allow the word of God to take root and grow. And the other way was that we sprang up, we heard the word, we sprang, we went forth with that word to tell people about the goodness of God and the cares of this world, the riches of this world, and the pleasure of this world choked the life of God's word out of our hearts. Amen. And then, so those are three ways to go to hell, or there are a lot of ways to go to hell, but only one way to go to hell. And then we found the last parable. Now, you're somewhere in this parable, uh, but on good ground. 8.15 says, but that some fell on good ground. Now, uh, now, now I, I, I can imagine myself uh, saying that, that, that most people, uh, whether they're on good ground or not, when they look at that, when they hear that sermon and they, and they see those parables, they're going to say that they are on good ground. You know, you, you see, sometimes, sometimes uh, your and my inter interpretation of good is different than God's interpretation of good. I need you to hear me now. See, see some, 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 some folks say, that's a nice looking car. And somebody else said, I wouldn't have it. You know, sometimes we say we holy and righteous and God said I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it. The way you live, the way you lie, the way you are, the way your heart is wicked and evil. So we have to make sure that we're on the same page. So so, so this message is a good ground sign. In other words, there should be some signs that you're on good ground. You shouldn't leave here not knowing that's where you're going. You shouldn't, listen to me, if you're a Christian, you ought to know that you know that you know that you know that you're on your way to heaven. Let me tell you, you're still lying, but you're not lying like you used to. If you keep living for God, you're not going to be lying tomorrow like you are today. It's a process. Amen. Let me tell you something. If we had to live perfect from the time God forgave us, we would all be in hell. But there ought to be a sign that something is changing in your life. And it, not ought, to, it ought not be a sign just to you. It ought to be a sign to those that are around you. A good, a good ground sign. See, see, now we want to talk about your claim. Our claim for us that's going to heaven. We say that we are going to heaven. We claim that we are going to heaven. Remember, I don't know if you watched Westerns or not, but back in the, in the day when, when, the, when the West was wild and, and, the, and, and the government owned all the land, they, they encouraged people to go and make settlements, and, 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 and especially with the, the gold and the silver, when folk would go out west or wherever they went, and it was a silver strike or a gold strike, folk would go out and, and they would work a, a part a piece of land, but in order for that land to become theirs, they 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 had to claim it. And the way they had to claim it is they had to they had to uh, give a description of it, and and then they had to go into the claims office and they had to pay a fee and file a claim. Let me tell you something: Christ has already paid the fee for you to file a claim, but you still got to go file the claim because if you don't file the claim, then what's going to happen is that the, you're not going to be able to own what you say you own. Some of us call ourselves Christians, don't own on the word, don't own the Holy Ghost, don't own nothing except a word that says we're Christian. Watch me here now. In order for you and I, in order for you and I 
to file our claim. Here's how you file the claim. God's already paid the price so we can go file the claim. But there's, a, there's something that we have to do when we go to file the claim on Jesus Christ, when we go to file the claim on good ground, when we go to file the claim on love and peace, when we go to file a claim on life abundantly, when we go to file a claim that if I be in you and you be in me, ask what you will and you can have what you want. When we go to file a claim on that, we have to have a good and honest heart. That's what pays for the claim. If you and I don't have a good and honest heart, the claim is no good. The, the claim has literally not been filed. That's why you got a, a church full of folk right now. Don't love nobody. Don't forgive nobody. Get more joy out of mess than they do out of the word of God. Get more joy out of you being in trouble than you being right. Get more joy out of you being going down than God lifting you up. Get more joy out of people talking about you than folk praising you. That's because they haven't filed a claim in the gospel with a good and honest heart. That's what it says. Good ground has to have a good and honest heart. Amen. Here's what he says here. Good ground. You got to have an honest heart. And, on, and when you have that honest heart, having heard the word, verse 15, you keep it. Amen. If you get, if you're gonna, if you if you're claiming Christianity, you got to keep Christianity. If you're claiming Christianity, you've got to come with the right heart. It's got to be on good ground and the right heart. It's not that you've given up drinking, not that you've given up your sin, but that you are willing from your heart to get to give it to God and let God have His way, since your way has never worked. Good God Almighty, and bring forth uh, to 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 keep it and bring forth fruit. With patience. Listen to me. You didn't get strung out on alcohol overnight. You didn't start gossiping about, gossiping about people overnight. Don't you think you're going to stop that tomorrow? Now, God is able to do it. And some folks, he does. But for, for, for most of us, it's a process. And if God wants the process to be instantaneously, that means right now, right now, as Big Mom used to say, that's God's business. But if God wants you... To, to grow in that thing, which is what the word says, then you got to, just like you grew in sin, the, the, the word of God enables us through the Holy Ghost to grow out of sin. A good ground sign. Let's talk about some of that. Now, 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 your proof, back, your proof of good ground is here. In, in, in uh, Luke, the 16th verse, it says, no man, when he has lit it, lighted a candle, covered with a vessel. Here's what he's saying. If you have, if you are truly on good ground, folk are going to see that you don't live like you used to live. Folk are going to see that you don't talk like you used to talk. Folk are going to see that there is something different about you. Folk are going to see that you don't club like you used to club. You don't lie like you used to lie, and you don't present yourself like you used to present yourself. Why? Because you, not only did you, when you file a claim with a good heart, God has already claimed that heart, and when God claims the heart, there has to be a change, and there will be a change. Why? Because you came with good ground, and God takes good ground, and God changes good ground to match the good heart. Woo he changes your behavior on the outside to match your uh, good heart on the inside. You can't change outside in. You change inside out. Good God Almighty. That's why you got a lot of folk playing Christians. But you let a car pull out in front of them. All of us are bad. We're not, I'm not as bad as I used to be. We call ourselves Christian. We put up a front that we love people. And the first time we don't get our way, we're mad. First time. You know, as a pastor, I've been, at every church, there, you know, there, 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 my experience with Sister Gibbon and I, we experience this everywhere we've gone. When somebody gets mad at the pastor, kids don't talk to us anymore. Ain't nobody mess up about that. I love them kids and I love them parents, but somebody's going to tell you you ain't right. You can forget that. I didn't come here. Listen to me. If I wanted to tell you a lie and get along with you, I'd stayed in the street. I wasn't called to do that. I was called to tell you you need to get your tail somewhere and sit down and quit sinning and quit talking about people and quit lying on people and quit hating on folk and quit treating folk like dogs because your name is Gilbert. 
Let me tell you something. Your name going to hell like everybody else's if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And accept him with a good heart so that he can change our hatred into love and our unforgiveness into forgiveness. I'm talking about a good sign. A good ground sign is that folks see a change in us. I'm not talking about getting a new house. That has nothing to do with your heart. I'm not talking about getting a new car. I'm blessed and highly favored. Listen to me. You're not blessed and highly, highly favored if you have a change on the inside and God, and God has a witness through your behavior on the outside. I'm talking about a good ground sign. You're claiming good ground. But do you have the signs of good ground? Woo! Somebody done got mad already. I ain't thinking about you. You can't reach out and touch me now. I'm at the house. Now watch this. He said, if you're really saved, if, you, if, you, if you're really uh, on good ground, if, you, if you've really been redeemed, uh, what you don't do is, is, is you don't not tell somebody about Jesus Christ. No man, when he had lit a candle, God has lit the candle of your heart, and it should be illuminated. And if it's illuminated, why would you not tell, why would you cover the vessel? The candle is lit. Why, why, why aren't you telling somebody about Jesus Christ, not necessarily with your mouth, but with your behavior, because it cannot be hid. A light that has been lit cannot be hid. You don't put it on the bed. You don't put it on the bushel. You want the world to see. It's amazing to me when when we were with 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 Satan, uh, we had no shame. Sure, we drank in the street, smoked in the street, chased in the street, did whatever we want to do. I'm I'm grown. Shoot, and I'm on my own. I can do what I want to do. But when we come to Christ, we, we, get, we get shame to tell folk about Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me in that day, I'm going to be ashamed of you in front of the Father. I'm not saying you're not going to get to heaven. But I'm saying because you were ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. You're going to get in. But I'm going to, listen to me. What he is saying is let your little light shine that men may see that God is real. And that God is not just hot air. Ooh-wee. Good God Almighty. Now watch this. Watch this now. I need to keep moving here. He says here. He says you're proof. So no man light a candle and put it on the bed. Sit on the candle stand. They, listen to me. When folks see you, when they enter into your presence, they ought, they ought, whoo, they ought to see the light. 1 Corinthians says this, though I speak with the tongue, listen to me, I'm going to tell you how important this is. Here's a sign now. Though I speak with the tongues of men and tongues of men and of angels and have not love. Love is a sign you've been saved, folks. Love is a sign that you've got good ground. Love is a sign that, 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 that God has touched you. When, you. when you were mean and unconcerned about other folks, when, when we were unforgiving and lying, when we hated our brother for no cause. White folks, when you hate folk just because of their color and you going to, and you going to church and, and, and you tell my glory, how God ain't hearing that mess from you. You call yourself smart. That's stupid. You can't get no dumber than that. And you call yourself a Christian. Black folk, you know I'm headed your way now. All of us do that. All of us do that. Hate, hate the white man. And in the Bible, it says to love thy neighbor. That's a sign that God has changed you. I know they've done us wrong. And I also know we done, we've done somebody else wrong. So if God get them, God got to get us. Whee! I'm talking about a good ground sign is that we re remove God. We allow God to remove the hate, to replace it with love. He said, he said, though I, I, I speak with tongue I, and, and, and though uh, I, I, I can preach like angels and, and I don't have love, I am just sounding brass. That's a sign. And tinkling symbol. When folk, when folk get up and preach like an angel and sing like angels and all that kind of stuff and really nice and nice and, and, they, just, and, and, they, and they haven't changed their ways, that's a sign that they still where they were when they came into church. But it's not for you to change them. 
is for you to pray for them like somebody prayed for you. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am not. That's what he says. He said, though I'm a prophet, I can prophesy. I have the gift of prophecy. And, I, and God has given me the wisdom to understand all, my, all mysteries. And I have the knowledge of God. And, though, and I have faith that can remove. This is Jesus talking. This, I have faith. This, this is the word of God talking. Not this is the Corinthians. This is Paul talking. This is the word of God. He's preaching to us here now. He, and though I have faith that can remove mountains. And I don't love nobody. That's a sign that I'm still on my way to hell. Because in order to have good ground, you've got to have love in your heart. Good ground says, Lord, I'm a mean, mean as a cobra. And I know it. And I'm coming to you knowing what I know about me. But I, I, I can't do it myself. I've tried it. I can't love myself. I've tried it. I can't forgive in myself, in and of myself. I've tried it. I need you to give me a taste for love and a taste for forgiveness and a taste for all those things that you want me to change in my life. I can't do it. I surrender all. I'm here honestly. God says, have a seat, bro. Let's work this thing out here. I got you. Follow me. Amen. That's what he told his disciples. Follow me. But you got to give God room in your heart to allow him to come in and take over in your life. So you can do all these things, but if you don't have love, love is a good ground sign. Praise God. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though my body be burned, and I have not charity. Look here. Look here. If you, if you sell everything you got, to feed the poor and you don't have love. You just sold off. You just gave away all your money for nothing. Still going to hell. Unless you get that change. Okay? And though uh, I'm I'm gonna be a martyr and everybody's gonna be talking about me because I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna de deny Jesus Christ. I, I'm gonna I'm they can burn me at the stake. And you're burning. And you made your point. But God wasn't in your heart. You did it so that you could be a martyr. You did it so people could, wow. And God said, you're going to hell. You're going to hell because without love, love is a good ground sign. Amen. Boy, that's why the church is empty right now. That's why the church is splitting right now. That's why the church is, is losing pastors and pastors are losing churches because we, all of us, from the pulpit to the back door don't have good ground signs. Preach a sermon, a loving sermon, and come out the pulpit and know so stuck so far up in there you can't even you can't even speak to your own membership uh, that, that God has given you to pass over. Uh, know so stuck, stuck, so stuck so far in there that you want somebody to bow down to you instead of bowing down to you. Ain't nobody got time for that mess. That's what got us into trouble in the first place. You are here to preach and not only are you here to preach, you're here to show some signs in the pulpit with no sign. You stupid. What? This is the word of God that you and I are preaching, and we don't even have a sign. I know them church folk ain't right. I know they got that family mess going on, and they got that click stuff going on, and they got that don't speak to some folk going on. But I'm here to tell you, I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to love the hell right out of you. And if I don't, it won't be because I didn't try. I'm not going to get, and when I get mad at you, because I do. I'm going to forgive you like God forgives me when he gets mad at me. You got to have a good ground sign, preachers. You got to have a good ground sign, deacons. Good grief. The preacher and the deacons have keep more mess going on in a congregation than, than, than rats in a cheese factory. You got to get this right. And listen to me. You ought to be a beloved pastor. You ought to be a beloved deacon. Woo! Boy, that's another sermon in itself. But God is clear. You got to have a good ground sign. You know, you being a deacon ain't no good ground sign. I know that's bad English. Okay, let's say it this way. You being a deacon is not a good ground sign. You being a preacher is not a good ground sign. You being a, in the choir, woo! All the hell in, in, in hell is in the choir. It's not a good ground sign. That's biblical, by the way. That's why I say that. And it's true. Okay? Listen to me. Being in an auxiliary is not a good ground sign. Loving folk in spite of is a good ground sign. Letting God change you from what you were to what, you, what he wants you to be, that's a good ground sign. 
He says here, here's what charity, here's another good sign. Here's a sign. Verse 4 says, charity, 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, I'm sorry. Charity, verse 4, charity suffers long. A good ground sign is that you, you wait on people. Amen. A good ground sign is that you move from impatience to patience. That's a good ground sign. Uh, 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 a good ground sign is that charity suffered long. And charity is kind. kind. And a good ground sign is you stop being meaner than a cobra and a rattlesnake put together. And you, st and you, st and you, start, you start being kind to people. You wonder why the church ain't full. Ain't nobody trying to come up in there and... Yeah. Charity envious not. Listen to me. You just got your new car. I'm happy for you. And I want you to keep praying so I can get my new car. And when I get my new car, I want you to be happy for me. We shouldn't be envious toward one another. Why? Because the same God that gave it to one child in due season is going to give it to the other child. When I listen to me, when I'm when when something happens in my life that causes great joy and happiness, you be happy for me. Don't envy me. Listen to me. When you get your stuff, you want folks to be happy for you. I want you to be happy for me. And the Bible says a sign is that you don't envy one another. Preachers envy one another over sermons. You didn't give yourself a body. You didn't give yourself a voice. You didn't give yourself a word. You didn't give yourself the Holy Ghost. And then you're going to be jealous over somebody else preaching what you think is a better sermon. Than yours. There is no such thing. All sermons are great sermons when they're done the way God has called for them to do. Quit trying to be like somebody else. And quit trying to envy somebody else when you think they've done better than you. That's God's business. You just take care of your business. Ooh -wee. Boy, this thing is ugly up in here. I'm telling you, a good ground sign is that we leave flesh stuff and go to spiritual stuff. Watch this. Watch this. Charity doesn't end. Love doesn't end. Charity, which is love, doesn't, doesn't uh, 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 put itself above others. And charity is not puffed up. So many people in the church, when they drive up, when they walk up, they got to have the best clothes. And I promise you, I get the clothes they ain't see. Country poor boy, I got talked about at the bus stop until I was, until I was shoot. We're almost out of high school. I think clothes, I think nice clothes are, does a lot for a person's uh, uh, ego and self-esteem. But don't you, but don't let your clothes make you now. Because I can get, I can get a pair of holy blue jeans. I, that's the style now. They call that stress, man. And and, and, and and be clean too. My point is, don't let your stuff cause you to feel like you are better than somebody else. Ooh -wee. Boy, that is another sermon. A sign that, that you are on good ground is that no matter what you have, without God, your attitude is that I ain't got nothing. Because if I lose it, I got a God that can give it back. And if I leave here, I can't take it with me. Hey, man, this man, I know a lot of rich folk with money. And let me tell you something. The ones that are grounded in God, watch this. You can't tell they got a dime. They talk to the hobo. They talk to everybody. You know why? Because they too have been that route. And because God has blessed them to have that, they, they are responsible, responsible for making sure that they show signs that their money and their stuff it's not their God. They show love and they show patience and forgiveness. I'm talking about a good ground sign. Uh, love the charity or love the do it not behave itself unseemly. Speak sometimes, don't speak sometimes. I mean, I'm telling you, we messed up, man. Messed up. Seek it not our own. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you're trying to take care of you and your own in the church, you, that's not love. That's not a, 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 a sign of good. That's not a good ground sign. That's a you still in hell sign. I'm not saying you still in hell, but I'm saying there, there's some things that need to change there. Hey, Amen. It's not easily provoked. Ooh -wee. I'm still working on that one. My goodness, boy. Uh, we all got something we need to work on, okay? Think it's no evil. Ooh -wee. I need to work on that one. I know you do too. Amen. But let me tell you, if you don't get a handle on that, what you think is going to be manifested outwardly. 
First Corinthians uh, 13 and 6, last one here, says rejoice not in iniquity. Don't, uh, listen to me, a good sign that you have been saved and on your way to heaven is that you don't rejoice if when other folk have uh have storms in their life when when somebody else's child go to jail when somebody else's child get busted for drugs when somebody else's child uh, 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 has been bad and now you think they got what they should have got listen to me none of us get what we should have gotten or none of us would be alive don't even go there I'm talking about a good ground sign I know some of this is stuff is hard to hard to uh, hard to receive but let me tell you what do you, what do you mean hard to receive you ought to try being on the other end of this stuff Every in the church, and we wonder why the church is empty. We wonder why people don't don't believe in God like they used to. We wonder why uh, people people don't call on the name of God because those of us who call ourselves uh, Christians, uh, we don't we're not showing any signs that we're Christians. We should be showing the power of God and change lives because changed lives change lives. Good God Almighty, until we change, the world will never have an opportunity to change. Amen. Uh, need, to, need to keep moving here. Uh, uh, Luke 8 and 17 says, uh, but uh, 13 and 6, 1 Corinthians 13 and 6 says, rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoice is in the truth. We, we, we don't rejoice in bad news. We rejoice. We rejoice because God is our God. We rejoice because when we when we were in trouble, he came and delivered us, delivered us out of all of, our, all of our trouble. We rejoiced because while we were yet in our sins, he died for us. We rejoiced because we look back over our lives and we should have been dead and gone a long time ago. But he didn't let us die now. We rejoiced because he gave us a second chance. We rejoiced because that second chance turned into a one million chance. We rejoiced because he cleans us up every time we get dirt. We rejoiced because he's better to us than we are to him. We rejoice because his love and mercy endureth forever. We rejoice because we always have an opportunity to say, forgive me. We always have an opportunity to come back. We always have an opportunity to do better in Christ. All we have to do is ask. We thank God that he's there for us in the truth of his word. Luke 8 and 17 says, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known. In other words, if you are evil, God is going to manifest itself. If you're on good ground, it's going to manifest itself. If you ignore the word of God, it's going to manifest itself in your life. If you, if you're, if, if you're, if you don't want to get rid of the sin in your life, it's going to manifest itself in your life. Praise God. If, 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 if you allow the word of God to come in and you and it take root and you go forth with it, but the cares of this world and the riches of this world and the, and the pleasures of this world are more important to you, it's going to manifest itself in your life. You can't cover that up. That's coming out. What sin comes out. That's why when, 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 uh, when whites or black tell, tell racial jokes and you check them on it, well, I didn't mean it. Well, if you didn't mean it, you wouldn't have said it. Don't go there with me. Piece of boy, Lord, forgive me. Boy. I almost said it. Don't play that. Don't play that with your daddy or your mama. Don't play that. But the point is, is that it came out because it was in there in the first place. And you don't apologize for what's in you. You change through Christ what's in you. Because if you apologize for what's in you, you'll be apologizing until you and I leave this place. Because that's a sign that we are on bad ground, on, 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 on wayside ground, on rocky ground, and on thorny uh, ground. Ooh -wee. Boy, look here. This is some good stuff today. Listen to me. Listen to me. That verse says, uh, for nothing is secret. What God is saying is what, what is committed to you in secret should be made manifest. If you're, if you're on good ground, people should be able to see. For your master did not give you salvation so that you could bear it. Salvation. Listen to me. Jesus told folks, don't go tell nobody that I hear you. Go to, let me tell you, they were so excited. Listen to me. When the word of God gives you such great joy, there is no way when you really have love in your heart, when love is a sign that you won't tell somebody about Jesus. Good. God Almighty. Listen to me. Galatians says this. Because we need to come to a close. I need to finish this today. Uh, good ground is, listen to me, Galatians, here's what we want to talk about. Good ground is real love. Amen. Your proof of good, your, uh, a good ground sign 
is love. And Galatians gives us a beautiful example. He says here, Galatians says, look here, if you want to see some signs, it all comes from love now. But the fruit of the, uh, Galatians 5 and 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. We've been talking about that. Now, love is like a, it's like a woman that she produces. That's why love has to be a she. She produces. Look at what love produces. It's love that produces joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of love uh, young ladies and, and women and men and young men that they say, you look nice. Oh, you fine. Nah, I'm not. That's a lust. I'm not talking about a lust. I'm talking about the love of God that is, that is shown in the word of God. When we get the love of God in us, a sign of that is that we have great joy, great peace. We have long suffering. We get great patience with, and we become from being mean to and harsh to gentleness and goodness and our faith increases. We, we become neat. Uh, we don't, we don't have to have the last word. We can take a few, we can take a lick and keep on temper. We become, we have our temperance are better. We don't, we don't lose control of our anger. We don't lose control of our behavior. Uh, it gets better. We get that. We get a handle on that. That is a sign against us. There's no law. God says there's no, there's no law in the, in the world against joy and peace and hope and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. There's no law. You can't find a law in no country against that. Woo God knows us, man. And they that Verse 24 says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections of the lust. Now watch what he's saying here. In other words, he's saying we, be, the sign that you, a good ground sign is that the love of God has caused us to fight against those evil things that fight against our spiritual things, our righteous things in Christ Jesus. Ooh, it's got to be a fight. It's got to be a fight. It's got to be a war. It's got to be a war. If there's no war, you, you, there's no, if there's no war, there's no God. There's no Jesus in you. There's no war. Jesus said, I came. I didn't come to bring the mother and the father, the father and the son together. I came to put them at odds with one another because one is right and one's not. I didn't come to bring the mother and the daughter together. I put them at odds with one another because one is right and one is not. I didn't come to put white folks and black folks and Jews together because one's right and one's wrong. Those that are in me are right and those that are in you and, and, and not in me are wrong. Then that, that can be your own family and that can be another way. It don't even count. Because it don't have nothing to do with going to heaven. That's just that junk they play down here. That, that, that's causing them everything. And they're too stupid to see it. Too spiritually ignorant and blind to see that you can't treat folk any kind of way. And God's going to weak at that stuff. Ooh good God Almighty. America, you ought to have a good ground sign and you don't. Somebody say, well, you don't like America, you go live somewhere. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to preach right here. So when I get ready, God get ready to bring me home, I go there. But until then, you ain't right, America. White folk ain't right. Black folk ain't right. Jews are not right. Spanish, nobody's right. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Get out of my face with that. Amen. There ought to be a sign that you're right with God. Take heed, therefore. I need to come to a close. Take heed, therefore. Uh, if, if we live in the spirit, we'll, if we live for God, uh, if we live in the spirit, we ought to walk in it. If we talk about how, if we claim God, we ought to, we ought to walk in God. Let us not be desirous of, blank, of, of, of vain glory and provoking one another and envying one another. There it is again. Take heed therefore how ye hear. This is the last verse in Luke. Luke 18. Take heed therefore how ye hear for what's, whatsoever had, for whosoever had, to him shall be given, and whosoever has not from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Now, let me tell you what he's saying here real quick. He is saying that if you don't have God in your life, what you do have, God is going to take it away. And if you do have God, what you have is going to be added to. If you don't have God, what you have is going to be minus out. Ooh you wonder why you're losing stuff quicker than you're getting stuff? Because you ain't right with God. A good ground sign is that you have the peace and the joy and the hope. And let me tell you, you may stay in a shack, but you ain't losing that shack. And if you do lose that shack, man, you're going to come up with a better shack than that. That's how God works. Those of us who have Christ shall be added. We shall be added to. And those of us who don't have Christ, we shall be minus out. 
real quick here. Let's talk about the importance of good ground or real love. Luke 18 and 19 says, then came, then came his mother and his brethren. Uh, Jesus is preaching this sermon, and, and he's ended it here. He's ended it, and, and then they came, and, and could, they couldn't get to him. That's what verse 19 says. And it was told him by certain, which said, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desire to see. That they couldn't get in. It was too many folk. And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, let me tell you something. He answered and said unto them, my mother and my brother, are these which hear my word, which hear the word of God, and do it. You want to be more, listen to me, Mary has her place. The Bible says she's blessed of all women that ever walked this earth, but she's not Jesus. And Jesus, listen, he said, John, there's no one greater than John. But let me tell you something. Jesus said, if you keep my word, you're great as John. God says that those that keep his word is a good sign that you are his family. If you keep his word, you're his mother. If you keep his word, you're his brother. Amen. Let's talk about salvation. It's time to go. Okay? Remember, everybody on here should be able to preach Romans. <laughs> 10 and 1. Man, man. Romans 10 and 1 says... Listen, this is Paul talking, and this is what this is my heart here, and this should be the heart of every Christian. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. White man that hang me, hang us, white man that build jails and have made business out of us, white man that shoot us down like dogs in the street. White man that builds his laws to entrap us and enslave us. My desire, my heart's desire for you is that you be saved. God doesn't want not one person in hell. Black folks, we kill each other like nothing. Then when the white man do it, we won't have a march. We should be concerned and we should do something when it's us and when it's them. But my desire for you, I can't get mad because my, my desire is that we all might be saved. Jews, Gentiles, that's all of us. Spanish, Japanese, Korean, it doesn't matter. My heart's desire is for every soul to be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. That's us in the church. We run around singing. We run around preaching. And we run, But that, that's not a sign that you're saved. That's not a sign of good ground. Preaching is not a sign of good ground. Look at the, look at the mess we do. Deacons. <laughs> Please. Church member. A joke. That's not a sign. Love is a sign that we'll say. Verse 9 said, jump down to Romans 10 and 9 said, but if thou confess with that, if you have heard the word of God and you can confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was the only begotten son of God, that he came and lived and died and rose with, by, by, by the power of his father with all power for your sins and for mine. He suffered and died, left heaven, left everything to come to nothing, to save nothing, that nothing might become something again in the eyes of God. If you believe that, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and this is 10, and the mouth confession is made. If you've heard the word and you can believe that, and you, you can believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. I want to, I want to stick a pen right here, before, right before we close. Let me tell you something. 
in sin, sin will have you in some shameful spots. Somebody's in jail this morning in a shame. Somebody has done something illegal and you're about to go to court and go to jail in a shame. Someone hasn't done right by their family and it's a shame. Someone has has has, has socially and privately and in the family shamed themselves to a degree that it's almost unbearable. On the job, you name it. But I'm telling you something. Those that call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord promised that if you call on me and you have a good honest heart, sincere heart, and you mean it, he said, I, you will not be ashamed. I will take that shame from you. They'll be looking for you down there, and I will have you up here. Stay with me. Be patient with me. Keep, hear my word, and keep my word, and do my word. And when you fall short of my word, the part of my word says to, to repent and get up, and I will make sure that those laughing at you now won't be laughing at you tomorrow. That's the power of our God. If you're here today and you know not Christ in the pardon of your sin and you want to be saved and you can come and you have heard the word of God and you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God and you want him to come into your heart to forgive you of your sin and let and you want God Christ to come into your heart through his word and allow the Holy Spirit to live out God's will through your life in your through the through your heart, which is your life. The life is a heart. If you believe that, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. If you're on today and you want salvation, just type in need to talk. Someone will call you. Type in need to talk. There's a way you can do that when nobody else sees your number. Amen. Just put in need to talk. If you want prayer, just type in need prayer. And if you want to join Greater Friendship Christian Church family, uh, just put, I'm interested. We're not meeting now. We're supposed to, we were supposed to go back August 1st, then October 1st. Now it's uh, February the 1st. If it clears up before then, we'll come back before then. But we're not marching up there to get it down. Listen to me. It's one thing to be, to be, to be, to be there, and then somebody dies because you're there, and you feel bad about it. No, I think that officers are making a good decision. Uh, and and if, you, if we send out a, a, a message uh, the last time we sent it out, and you, if you don't feel that way, let us know why you feel that way. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it. But right now, if you need to be saved, need to talk. If you need prayer, need prayer. If you want to and join a great friendship, just let us know. You know why? Because we love you, and we're not going to be here forever. I hope to see you next Sunday, but that's not a guarantee. I know you hope to be on next Sunday, but that's not a guarantee. In the twinkling of an eye, it is over. And your opportunity to believe and your heart and confess with your mouth will be over. And if you leave here without Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will have missed the opportunity to give the world a good ground sign. God bless you and we.